The wait is over, it's finally here, introducing Stable Diffusion 3.5. Like it says on their webpage today, we are introducing Stable Diffusion 3.5. This open release includes multiple model variants, including Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large and a Large Turbo. And additionally, Stable Diffusion 3.5 Medium will be released on October 29th. These models are highly customizable for their size, run on consumer hardware, and are free for both commercial and non-commercial use under their permissive license. So a little bit different to Flux, that's quite handy. You can download Stable Diffusion 3.5 from Hugging Face and their inference code on GitHub, although of course I will be using Comfy UI today. More information there on what's being released. The Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large is an 8 billion parameter model, so that's quite nice. The model is ideal for professional use cases at 1 megapixel resolution, so that's a little bit lower than Flux, which can nicely go up to 2 megapixels. But unlike Flux, this large one isn't a distilled model, although they do have a distilled model there as well, 3.5 Large Turbo. Where do the models excel? Well, apparently they're customizable, uh, they've got efficient performance and diverse output. So if you're looking to avoid flux face, this might be one way to go. I like to take these various charts and things with a pinch of salt, but here we've got SD 3.5 large, scoring very highly and uh, a little bit higher there than flux one dev for the, uh, the prompt adherence, but not so good on the aesthetic quality. If you want to play with the new models at home using Comfy UI, then head on over to Comfy UI Examples as they have all the instructions there. You probably have these models already if you've played with Flux or indeed SD3, the first one. You've got the Clip L Safe Tensors, the Clip G, and then the TXXL FP16 or the FP8 if you've got low VRAM. Now there's a couple of models, the SD3 5 Large Safe Tensors, like it says there, put in your Comfy UI models checkpoints directory. And that doesn't contain the clip weights. Those are those one up there. But there is another model down here, though, the SD 3.5 large FP8 scaled. And that's got everything all in the one checkpoint. You'll need a different workflow example for that one. So I'm starting off with this one. So you can just drag that. So there it is in Comfy UI. OK, we'll zoom out a little bit now. What's going on here? That's that's the whole workflow. It's not very big at all. We've got different text encoder configurations. There's a, a single clip, a dual clip, and a triple clip. They're using the triple clip by default. They've got some notes there about where to put the files. And there's the checkpoint, SD 3.5, large safe tensors. And again, some notes on where to put it. They've got empty SD3 latent image, 1024 by 1024 by default. 20 steps, TFG 5.5, Euler SGM Uniform. Okay, all right, let's run that through and see what we get. Good, that's worked perfectly. We've got the image very much like on the Comfy UI examples page. So how much VRAM did that use? Well, that went all the way up to 20 gig while I was doing it. Oh, okay, so can we make this any smaller? Yes, of course we can. Of course, one way is to use a smaller checkpoint, but whichever checkpoint you use, if you use this force set clip device from Comfy UI Extra Models, then that will put the text encoder over onto your CPU, saving some precious VRAM. It does mean that encoding the text prompts takes a little bit longer, but we want to save VRAM here. These are the standard settings I'm using for all the generations, and the ratio there, one, essentially means I'm doing 1024 by 1024. As Stable Diffusion 3 was ever so good at putting women on grass here, I'm doing exactly the same thing. So I've got a woman on the grass next to a sign which reads keep off the grass. That's the standard settings that they had in their 20 step CFG 5.5 Euler SGM uniform. Um, not particularly impressed by that, but don't worry because there's more. How about if we do the dual sampling like we've been doing with Flux over the past weeks? So here I've got a couple of latent noise nodes, two samplers, and it's got keep off the grass. That's not too bad. It's got the sign correct, but um, still not overly impressed by the quality. OK, maybe it's just the number of steps. So this time I've gone all the way up to 50. And I'm not sure whether I should click off the grass or what that woman's hands and legs are doing. But the hat is definitely silly. Maybe if I try the usual trick of CFG rescaling. So this time I've done a rescale, bumped the CFG up to 11, 25 steps, 
And uh, no, no, all right, that didn't work either. Hmm, okay, it's probably time just to try some rodents. So here I'm going for an impressionist art style painting. Um, is that impressionist art? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. How about a totally different style? So this is a gritty manga style anime art illustration of a tiny evil kitten being defeated by a towering godlike rodent warrior in powerful... Uh, whoa, hang on. Um, that rodent looks like a kitten. So I don't know. I quite like the style, but that that's not a rodent warrior. There's two kittens. Okay, with Flux face being a thing, let's just prompt for that. So here, a magnificent, high contrast, award-winning HDR portrait photo of a woman with Flux face and a cleft chin, textureless skin and a cute button nose. Well, that's not too bad, but there should be a blurry street in the background, which hasn't really appeared. But we have got the portrait there. And as for the flux skin, I think it's done quite well on replicating it. Maybe some more styles then. Okay, a cubist art style rodent holding a sign which says, this is some text, I hope you like it. Does, is that what it says? This is some text, I happy icky. Yeah, I mean, it's close. And rodents, I think, always have that number of paws, don't they? Fine, how about a watercolour style then? So this is meant to be a lovely landscape painting in a watercolour art style with a dapper penguin wearing a bowler hat and monocle. Well, he's got a top hat, not a bowler hat, and I don't see a monocle, but I mean, I guess it's sort of watercolour style. Is it fully uncensored? Well, let's take a look here. I've got a vintage photograph of a woman who is standing next to something with the word uncensored on it. And that is definitely uncensored. So that's plenty of silly examples, but how good can it get? Well, this is the best I've been able to get out of it so far. We've got a model sampling flux node there. And by default, that's 3.0, but I've turned it down a little bit there to 2.75. I've also chunked the number of steps there all the way up to 50. And for the sampler, I'm using DPM++ 2M and a CFG there of 5.0. Now, as you can see, that's a lot better. The hand is almost normal. There's sort of reasonable skin and the, the quality of the image isn't too bad. Okay, so changing that model sampling down a little bit certainly seems to be key. Here, I've gone all the way down to 2.3. Once again, 50 steps. And um, yeah, the, the hand's still leave much to be desired. So it's an interesting model. We have got something that isn't distilled, which is nice. So we should get to see some fine tunes in the future. You get your guidance scale back as well. So, well, overall, I mean, it's not too bad at following the prompts, but it does miss a lot of things out. Um, you probably will need to play around with the settings and maybe have a high number of steps before you get any decent quality images. But being a non-distilled version, hopefully, we should see some nice fine tunes in the future. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.